a man believed he was a buffalo. Let's explore what happened. MN is a 25-year-old man presenting with irritability, decreased sleep, recurrent washing of the hands and genitals, and the belief that he is turning into a buffalo. His family report he has behaved like a buffalo for months. He is asking for grass and hay to eat, walking on all fours, and moving his head like a buffalo. MN states he had been intimate with his own buffalo several times in the previous six months. He believes that buffalo cells entered his body during these intimate acts and were turning him into a buffalo. First, his feet turned into hooves. Later, his legs and torso changed. Finally, his face changed into a buffalo's and he grew horns. He is desperately washing his hands and genitals to remove these cells. He will do anything to reverse this change. When MN looks in the mirror, he sees an upright, bipedal buffalo looking back at him. Upright bipedalism means that he moves standing upright on two legs. His family reports that, repulsed by what he sees, he screams and shouts in horror at the mirror. Family members are concerned he is possessed. They take him to a fate healer. The fate healer performs various arcane rituals. He gives traditional medicines and prays over MN. Nothing changes. Finally, his family bring him to hospital where psychiatrists review him. He is admitted to the psychiatry ward. He is thoroughly investigated to outrule physical causes for his illness. His CT brain is normal. His routine bloods are normal. His physical examination is also normal. In fact, no physical or medical abnormalities are detected. The psychiatrists review his history and current presentation. They assess him for both obsessive compulsive disorder and body dysmorphic disorder. Many people think obsessive compulsive disorder, otherwise known as OCD, is about excessive cleanliness or organization. Diagnostic criteria for the International Classification of Diseases, 10th edition, the ICD-10, do not specifically specify cleanliness or organization, however. Instead, the person must have at least two weeks of distressing thoughts, images, or feelings, and behaviors which interfere with them living their normal daily life. These thoughts, images, or feelings must not be delusional, and the person must recognize them as their own. They must be unpleasant, repetitive, and the sufferer must try to resist them. They may also experience compulsions to perform actions intended to magically undo future catastrophes. Clinically, one of the most common presentations of OCD occurs after a child is born. Previously, the person and their partner arranged their lives not to trigger any of their obsessions or compulsions. The patient's partner will, over time, have become trained to place things in certain locations, not break routine, and generally not trigger the sufferer's anxiety. But a newborn child is the personification of chaos, mess, and all sorts of triggering behaviors and situations. Prompt psychiatric referral, review of medication, and referral to cognitive behavioral therapy to build insight and coping skills can treat this very successfully. MN's treating team administered the Yale-Brown Obsessive Compulsive Scale, otherwise known as the Y-Box. This measures the presence and severity of OCD symptoms in patients. MN scored 17 out of 20 on the Obsession Scale and 15 out of 20 on the Compulsion Scale. His combined score of 32 out of 40 represents extreme OCD on the Y-Box. Body dysmorphic disorder, otherwise known as BDD, is a very misunderstood illness. It is frequently confused with various disorders of food intake. To diagnose BDD, clinicians must establish that the person is preoccupied with non-existent or slight differences in their physical appearance, and that they have repetitive, compulsive grooming behaviors and checking of their appearance. They check their appearance in anything reflective car mirrors, the windows of shops, and even polished pieces of metal on cars, shops, cutlery, work equipment, etc. 
The preoccupation must be distressing and impair the person's ability to function socially. It must not be better explained by a disorder of food intake. Clinically, body dysmorphic disorder often presents as depression or anxiety. Only when clinicians probe for the underlying issues are the patient's beliefs about their appearance uncovered. Presentations vary, but often there are attempts to camouflage the perceived abnormality. Beards and long hair are grown, excessive makeup applied, and obscuring clothing worn to cover the perceived abnormality. In extreme cases, lurid facial or body modifications can be used to draw attention away from the perceived abnormality. The main barrier to treatment is correctly recognizing the underlying issue. Once recognized, prompt referral, diagnosis, and appropriate medication combined with talking therapy can promote insight, lessen distress, and eventually eradicate the false beliefs. Psychiatrists treating MN diagnose him with OCD and body dysmorphic disorder with delusional beliefs. More specifically, these delusions are clinical zoanthropy of the boanthropy subtype. That's a really complicated sentence, so let's unpack it. Delusion derives from the Latin deludere, which means to play false. Zoanthropy derives from the Greek zoion, meaning animal, and anthropos, meaning man. It occurs when a person suffers from the delusional belief that they are an animal. Boanthropy derives from the Greek word bous, meaning ox or cow, and anthropos, meaning man. It is the subtype of zoanthropy, where people suffer from the delusion that they are a bovine animal. Following diagnosis, MN is prescribed 1. Fluoxetine, an antidepressant used to treat depression and obsessive-compulsive disorder. 2. Speridone, an antipsychotic useful to treat psychotic illness, delusions, and obsessional thought. MN is treated as an inpatient for six months and improves. His delusional belief that he is a buffalo disappears. The excessive washing and other OCD behaviors decrease significantly, but they do not stop. Let's put this interesting case into historical and geographical context. Zoanthropy and, specifically, boanthropy occur worldwide and throughout recorded history. In the Bible, in the book of Daniel, it states that King Nebuchadnezzar II of the Babylonian Empire was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. This is often taken to refer to boanthropy. Likewise, 1,000 years ago, in Persian culture, Prince Majd al-Dawla believed he was a cow. He mooed like one and asked to be killed and eaten like one. More recently, a 1969 Iranian film titled The Cow concerned a farmer who believed he was a cow. This delusion began when his cow, which gave him status in the village, died. If you'd like to find out more about this topic, I've included links to books which may interest you in the description. These are affiliate links. Please leave any comments or questions in the comments section. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.